Hey guys, Alex here with Catch Happy. I also run Sweeney Sports in Napa. It's catchhappy.co. Today I have a special cool video for you. Uh, my brother and I are gonna walk, do a walkthrough to a super awesome Restomod boat. So it's a 1957, we got this thing right behind me. It's a 1957 trailer boat made in San Rafael, California. And we got it as a dirty, cheap, piece of like waste it was a tub essentially all um this you know it's still okay for fishing but it was just in a terrible terrible condition so i want to show you what my brother did to this boat i want to walk you through what the hybrid motor looks like going from uh, gas to electric and also having a gas option on the boat i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty cool let's check it out first let's meet my brother his name is paul Oh, there you are. You kind of look like me. Don't, don't we look together a little bit? Yeah, just a better version of him. A better version, yes. Whatever. So, uh, you put a lot of work on this boat. Um, and, like, the, what was the intent? Like, when you st started working on, on this boat and kind of completely redoing the whole thing, what was the intent for this boat to be? Like, what it needed to be? Well, this was always going to be a fishing boat. Um, but, you know, I wasn't just happy with an empty tub. Um, also, this being a fiberglass boat, uh, it's uh, a little bit more difficult to deal with compared to aluminum. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, make it comfortable. So when you go fishing, you don't stress. Uh, so you can actually kind of lay back and relax and uh, focus on fishing rather than uh, fighting the boat, which what we've been doing up till that moment. Uh, <laughs> yes, we have. Every, fighting the boat while fighting the fish. Every but, time we go fishing. Yeah. Hey guys, part two of this video, we're gonna actually flip it on the water and show you. We've already taken a maiden voyage. This thing is super comfortable to fish. Well, let me start walking you through the, the features of this boat. I think you're gonna be quite impressed. All right, first, I want you guys to just feast your eyes on what this is. By the way, this is the Evan Rood old motor that's been converted to electric we're gonna walk you through all that we got a couple downriggers on this bad boy you got all kinds of shelving you look at that panel mm, gorgeous and of course uh, there's solar situation and that's how she looks like all right brother tell me what you have done there's some accessories to it let's start in the back all right well so let's talk about the boat first uh so trailer boat is not well-known brand but most of you might know it as a Klamath boat um, trailer boat uh, built these fiberglass ones for I think only two years and and then they were bought by Klamath and uh, switched to aluminum so this is uh, pretty rare um, you can still find them on uh, on forums once in a while but pretty rare um, I don't think it's a hot commodity they're just rare uh, but it's fiberglass it doesn't rust so uh, you know trailer was decent as well um, I haven't done anything to the trailer. It's still some work to be done to bring it up to speed. So let's start. Let's start from the back. Yeah. Let's, let's start, start from the power unit. Start with the motor. So this came with the boat when we got it. Uh, this is a 68, uh, 18 horsepower Evinrude. Uh, obviously two stroke. Um, this was, uh, it ran when we got it, um, it like a nightmare. Uh, and now it's rebuilt, uh, completely. So everything's taken apart, uh, replaced, polished, uh, cleaned, uh, rebuilt. So it runs perfectly now, like a clock, hers. Um, then behind here we have- Yeah, let's go to the featured what, item here. What used to be an th original three horsepower yacht win by Evan Rood which just seemed perfectly sized for electric conversion. So inside here is a thousand watt uh, electric motor, just literally sitting. Uh, you know. So you bespoke basically modified this. You took, yeah. the, took the internals out and put the electricals in. <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly. Nice. So there's literally a, a electric motor directly coupled with a drive shaft sitting here. There's a small battery here, um, like from a hoverboard uh, scooter. Um, inside this is a backup so it can charge from here with a regular charger oh that's cool um so this is again this is like the worst case scenario when everything else dies uh, all your batteries die it has internal battery to try to get you somewhere we can actually can we yeah can we get some yeah we can um, some things oh, yeah, obviously so i had to add some controls on this side uh so i added uh, a key a safety switch um uh, We'll talk about this later in the directional um, of course uh, lever so let's uh, switch it to one of the directions switch on the controller again if you notice this is from a scooter um, nice uh, three speed 
All right, so that's it. It's right now on the backup internal battery. Just when everything fails, we have, we'll talk to you about all the kind of stuff right. he built. Right, obviously the original motor didn't have a reverse. Uh, um, being electric, of course. <laughs> This is actually forward. What we saw before was reverse. Uh, so that's the motor. Like I said, it has its own uh, battery backup. However, the main power uh, comes in via this cable. So it's optional, so you can connect to it. So you can connect uh, external motor controller for a much more uh, powerful battery in the controller. So you can take advantage of the full thousand watts. Uh, inside here is a little uh, 500 watt uh, controller. So it doesn't run full power when an internal battery course one externally connected with a cable uh, you can say send three phase to it and run at a full thousand watts so that's the motor they're normally linked for the steering um, right now it's, take a look at the linkage here yeah right now it's uh, somewhat apart I'm trying to figure out a way to make them uh, quick disconnect right yeah well to make them tilt without you know without uh, interfering with the steering so so we can tilt one out of the water when the other one is in use um, otherwise they just create drag and we took it for the experimental ride right, so we've never taken our full throttle yet so let's see what that may look like hit it bro slow slower than we wanted to because we couldn't tilt up the motors so so my, Paul is modifying this stuff right now yeah so I'm rethinking the linkage here so that we can tilt it uh, without disconnecting the linkage or a quick disconnect so let's keep going, walking through it going forward obviously a couple of down riggers yep. uh, got them with Sweeney Sports <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thanks to Sweeney Sports um, now uh, obviously this is a stowed situation and then when deployed and they just up yeah we're not gonna like, need this on Tuesday for salmon but we did some kokanee and trout trips on it actually <laughs> it was a test trip but we hook a fish got yep, a fish yep. um, so, so let's talk about decking here so because that's kind of interesting yeah, so originally boat had nothing inside so it was just it was just a tub tub yep. and a piece of plywood roughly the shape of the boat just laying on the floor uh, with a couple of these, uh, well, not even these, these are like the next generation seats that we got. Um, but those pedestals and some really old seats that were just kind of sitting in the side by side, right? Up front, side by side, up yep. front. So, what I've done is I kind of lifted the floor, uh, you know, ad added some compartments, foam field, filled compartments for some buoyancy, um, and of course, the channel going down the center for the drainage. Um, I added the two side consoles uh, just for those are super cool. I'm telling you guys, I fished on this thing. It's just amazing because you could throw all your drink, throw all your weights, throw all your uh, kind of like lures here as you're switching them out. It's it's pretty cool. Right. So yeah. So the, one of the big problems in this boat, there was literally no place to put anything. So you kind of have to drop everything on the floor or keep it in the backpack. So. Now you can actually put some stuff in. Uh, you know, obviously some cabinets to kind of those are cool too. Keep your stuff locked up because you can put your uh, like the valuables into those little cabinets or whatever you want, like the downrigger weights and stuff like that. Right. So keep kind of bigger stuff out of the way. Uh, you know, obviously music, uh, sound. Um, Honestly, uh, full speed when this thing is roaring, <laughs> yeah, can't hear nothing. <laughs> the two-stroke is pretty loud, so at full throttle, there's not much of a music happening. But you know, trolling and fishing, uh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so going forward, so we've got remote controls for the Evinrude for the 18 horsepower. So uh, you know, obviously. So it's all linked up, huh? Yeah. Forward, reverse. You can kind of you can see it a little bit of shift. Oh yeah. Huh. Nice, nice. Right, uh, and the throttle control. Uh, so you can see it duplicates the controls, so you can actually use the tiller in the motor or use these. Uh, we have no reason to use the tiller. Yeah. And going forward, the deck, well, obviously a pair of pedestal chairs. Those are uh, nice chairs, yeah. Very comfortable. Again, we fished half a day on it. We got a top on it too. We'll talk about that in a moment, but yep. just so far, feast your eyes on this beauty. Hmm. Yeah, this is uh, this is originally to protect the, uh, the sides. We're gonna wrap it. From stepping on the sand, uh, but they also kind of very helpful not slipping and just, uh, you know, getting your head knocked out. Um, Anyway, so yeah, chairs are uh, pretty comfortable because you can swing around and cast uh, yep. as you want. Uh, I did not reinstall the windshield yet because it kind of it's comfortable to cast any direction you want. However, as we tested out last time, um, that 
It's no. a small boat. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you get face full of water sometimes. Yeah, you get you get sprayed. Uh, you know, waves don't make it up, right? But spray does if you know if it's windy and you're going kind of you know fast enough or trying to surf someone's wake. Um, uh, so going forward, so these are electrical motor controls. Uh, so you have the direction, so forward uh, and reverse, right, and That's off in the, in the middle. Uh, so Original steering This is electrical right. throttle lever, uh, 3D printed. Uh, again, it's based on a scooter so throttle. So you 3D printed this thing? Yeah, this is 3D printed. Uh, well, you only see the top portion of it. Behind there, there's a little uh, assembly that uh, that uses the scooter hand throttle control um, to basically then through several through three gears link it with a cool, uh, little lever to provide some resistance. Um, you know all the electricals uh, in the brain. So solar panel. So when off, uh, you know it doesn't uh, attempt to recharge the battery. Um, so battery and solar controller is here. Right, um, so you can see basically the solar output right now is down to seven volts. Obviously, we have no more sun. It's you know it's it's almost set, and the small battery is there, uh, basically a small ATV battery. Um, when the at full sun, basically in the daytime, uh, the solar panel outputs enough to run all the systems uh, with a surplus um, and and still charge the battery. So in this way, the boat is self-sustained. And we'll show you guys once we get in the water. We'll show you guys how this flips up and the solar stays on top of the cover. It's, it's really, really cool. Right. So i got a Bluetooth, a little Bluetooth module for music here. Uh, you know, obviously chargers, your, you know, your uh, horn uh, and so on, stereo. Uh, there's a button for a bilge pump. I don't have the pump in here yet. Uh, I do have a, in that compartment there, I have a clamp on pump for emergencies. Basically, it's uh, you know so you can grab it and literally stick it, put you know, on clamp-on battery terminals and just pump out water. I haven't figured out where to permanently mount it. You can see obviously the floor height there is pretty low, so standard kind of bilge pump would basically sit in your way and you would likely knock it off with your foot as a boat doesn't have a deep channel. So we'll figure it out. I'll probably side mount it eventually, but for now it's sort of you know you take it out of the compartment, you know clamp-on battery uh, terminals and just stick it in the water. It'll pump it out. Uh, yeah, and uh, navigation lights. So uh, I love the original steering wheel. You got to talk about that for a second, man. That's kind of cool, man. I mean, everything is rest modded except that original steering wheel, yeah. which is so cool. So one thing to tell. say about this boat: nothing expensive was ever purchased for it. Uh, yep. I tried to keep restoration <laughs> that same way. Uh, Try to use what I had or what was on the boat already. Uh, you know, like that speedo gauge, that's original from the boat. Um, although as we found out, it's not much, but it doesn't show much. Although it may just not respond to the speeds as low as this boat develops. So we don't know. Um, uh, this steering was original too, of course. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll figure out a way to maybe plastic dip it or wrap it. Or wrap it, uh, yeah. And uh, we'll keep it as is. I did not want to buy a cheap kind of, uh, you know, a, a cheap standard wheel because I think this is cool. Um, so on to the obviously we have kind of holders here. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. So so we actually so I didn't know if we have four rod holders. So we got a couple in the down riggers. We got a couple mounted here because we're gonna go salmon fishing. You guys see us salmon fishing. We're gonna do another video on Tuesday. We're gonna go with Austin. Gonna be two boats, four people, and then we're gonna put four rods. I didn't know if we're gonna do four rods, but we're gonna do four rods now. All right. So uh, solar panel, as you notice, so it, it it has a hinge attached to the to the bimini top. So as you put up the bimini, uh, it swings the solar panel on top. So it ends up on top of the bimini and uh, it's out of your way. So it doesn't stay here when the top is up. It kind of stays on top, uh, nicely secured and out of your way. Um, and I think that gets us basically to the end of the Well, month. let's go look at the power units, my friend. Well, so uh, the only thing I guess we didn't cover is the... Fish finder? Fish finder, yeah. Uh, well, it's a fish finder. It's a fish finder, yeah. We, we didn't we didn't invest a lot of money in this bad boy we just kind of got uh bare bones a for lot now of work but not a lot of money a lot of work huh yeah routed out it wasn't pre-wired yeah, for it uh, considering i'm not um, a kind of body work expert i'm not really any kind of expert i learn it as i go uh, as i do with anything so uh, you can see a lot of misses like the this nice finish uh, I know. well the finish we're, we're gonna wrap it so this is to protect the, yeah. the, the this is basically surface. a mishap with the epoxy. So this is epoxy finish, right? So this is not a paint, this is epoxy with the pigment. 
Uh, and this was a different epoxy that for some reason did not want to stay nice and flat on the previous layer. So anyway, there's a lot of lessons kind of learned here. Uh, a lot of epoxy wasted on this and a lot of sanding uh, on bad attempts. Um, but one of these days we're going to get it cosmetically uh, wrapped. We get it wrapped. I already know maybe, where. Maybe wrapped, uh, maybe coated, whatever. Um, maybe catch happy boat. So we're going to wrap it. So let's quick look at the power options. Um, so there are a few things. So initially I made several lithium battery cells again made mostly out of uh scooter uh, little uh, hoverboard batteries um they turned out to be not enough uh, basically at about 70 percent throttle they would cut out so it's just too much draw on the battery packs i used to think uh well I, I made 40 cell packs uh so it's uh 10 uh i guess 10 10 10 banks of four cells each uh so i ended up basically combining all three of the ones that I made into a single pack, paralleling them, uh, you know, um, into something like this. So you can actually see inside like this. So there are three packs in there. Kind of if you look uh, down there. Um, oh yeah, cool. Yeah. So I'm hoping that this pack will take uh, more amperage uh, and basically will not drop voltage or cut out. Um, when we try to full throttle the electric motor. Uh, we haven't tested this yet. This I literally finished it uh, yesterday. Um, this one. Um, Ooh, that's a massive unit. It's heavy. Yeah, I so put it down let's here. Let's move this off to the side for a second for next uh, thing. So this battery pack, uh, so this is a uh, lead acid battery pack. Um, so originally I found, uh, I found, very very cheaply um a guy was selling basically quite a few of the medical backup batteries they're like 12 volt battery packs each one has like three of those uh, double cells uh and then he was selling for like five bucks a pop so i bought all he had which was 11 um uh, and you know uh gutted them for the cells uh and i arranged the cells into a 36 volt pack uh, and now we have a 36 volt lead acid pack uh, about 24 amp hours um now this pack is obviously much heavier than the lithium one. However, uh, this does not cut out, does not basically drop voltage and full throttle, um, behaves quite nicely. Uh, and uh, capacity wise, obviously it's a lot more than single of those uh, lithium packs. We're, we yet to compare it to the, the, the whole pack that I made, but we'll see the nice thing is it doesn't have BMS, so it doesn't cut out when you, you know, when you overdraw and stuff like that. So, We'll see. We're, we're, we're yet to test both of these. Uh, we yep. tried it before just on a like, single those lithium packs and, and they will go through them pretty quick. Yep. However, at trolling speeds, uh, this will last the old day easy. Um, at, at basically, it's like 75% throttle, probably hour and a half, two hours. Um, so last, uh, this is the motor controller. Again, I, I made this modular because, you know, I, I wasn't sure if like this is the only boat we're gonna use it on. Um, so I, I made everything kind of a separate module. So, so you make you make other boats electric, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, I mean, this is a, a separate system. So th this basically thing runs that motor on that battery. So here, that big black cable that you see going into the motor, yep. uh, the other side of it goes in here. Uh, this is a three phase output uh, inside here and you know th these are basically some sensor operation of throttle like and, and various sensors that go in here um, They connect to the dashboard and inside uh, we'll have a again Ooh, a thousand nice. watt uh, motor controller um, Kind of amp shunt uh, for kind of to check the the draw in real time um, You can insert a battery pack in here and that's what we used to run a lithium battery pack of this size um, But I just but added this us. external uh, power source so you can now do either so you can still connect the battery pack inside here Or you can use this ex extension and then here you can plug nice. in any any other battery pack Nice, right? Like this um, And uh, I will give you basic battery of course, the pack itself also has a kind of quick voltage check, so you can glance uh, uh, the status of the pack. Um, so that's what we have for power options. Um, again, since we, it's been only been in the water once in this setup, you know, we you know, kind of made some. We've notes, learned something. Made some notes last time, kind of yeah, learned some lessons. So I was in the middle of 
adjusting some of the things that didn't work out as well as uh, expected. Um, so Alex kind of caught me right in the middle of those uh, modifications. And we'll probably kind of show a few of them in the shed later on. Um, and uh, yeah, so it should be ready by, uh, by the next trip.